using a DSLR after a long time. Wow. Well, when I started our photography, you know, way back in the mid 80s, uh, well, I was a wedding photographer. My first camera was a Pentax MX with a 50mm lens. Then I upgraded to a Canon AE-1 Super, again with a 50mm lens, and then went to a Nikon. I don't remember which one it was, but uh, another 50mm lens it had. 50mm was the most commonly used lens. I used to cover the entire wedding with 50mm lens. And later I realized that the 50mm was called the Nifty 50 because first thing it was probably the most commonly available one and it was the most uh, uh, cost effective one with the widest aperture. 1.8 I think was the most popular one and uh, all the other lenses were comparatively more expensive and hence the 50mm became very popular. The 50mm also reproduces an image exactly like your eye sees it. So that was another reason why it was popular uh, for a beginner for sure. As my professional photography life improved, I started uh, feeling the necessity of other lenses besides the 50mm lens too. And I chanced up on a 35mm lens, which I really fell in love with. And uh, for me, that 35mm was much more useful than my 50mm. It's a personal opinion, all right. And even while using a zoom lens, I saw myself using the 35mm more than the other, you know, focal lengths of the zoom lens. Well, then the digital uh, era began and uh, for some reason, the whole lensing, uh, you know, options changed. You had the 1635, uh, you had the 2470 and the 7200. It used to be very different in during the film era. Um, well, you had, I think, the 3570 and you have the 8200 and things like that were more popular during the film era. As I progressed, I started shifting more towards prime lenses. And uh, again, 35 continued to be one of my most favorite lens. In this video, I'd like to showcase to you one 35mm lens, which I would like to actually call Nifty. 35. Well, today I have a special lens with me. It is called SP. I think it's because it's a special lens. Uh, a 35mm 1.4 lens is the DI USD series uh, from Tamron. These days, uh, 24 megapixel is the most commonly available camera resolution. 36 and 47 and 50 and 60 are also very common. Besides that, the full frame digital cameras allow you to crop into your frames too, which means a 35 mm can be true 35 mm uh, on a 1.2 crop it can be 40 plus and a 1.5 or a 6 can be 50 plus which means you can effectively have more than one lens with one lens well you know what i mean and i'm using a nikon d850 one of my most favorite cameras here in pixel village so why tamron tamron has been traditionally making lenses for almost all brands of cameras this 35 mm lens from the sp series uh, gives you an option to still go for a 35 1.4 lens without compromising on quality so what we're going to do is to go and do a small experiment. I think if you've seen our previous Tamron uh, lens reviews, as we have a small, very basic setup in the studio and we will talk about this 35 mm in detail. The experts uh, test the lenses in the lab 
using probably more than a dozen parameters and we are no experts and this is not a lab. Uh, what we are trying to do is, uh, you know, we have some basic setups that we have kind of cooked up with our you know, rookie understanding of optics. Um, what we're going to worry about is some of the very uh, basic characteristics, you know, that we need to worry about. One is edge sharpness. Next is vignetting in various apertures. Then uh, distortion and uh, fringing. And uh, if there is any color biases for the optics, that's what we will worry about when we do our homegrown test in this uh, video. We downloaded those targets. They are called targets. We downloaded it from a website. I have added the link to that website in the description. You also can go there, download uh, those targets and do your own test at home. For the test today, uh, we're going to use a Nikon D850. Tamron uh, SP35mm f1.4 is mounted on it and we're going to shoot the entire range uh, of apertures available in the lens. Of course, in aperture priority mode. The ISO is set to the minimum, which is 64 in the 850. The color temperature is measured using a color spectrometer and it is keyed in so that we are, uh, you know, very sure about the whiteness and if there is a color, uh, you know, bias that is uh, in the lens, which is innately in the lens, then we will be able to see that. And uh, what else? I am overexposing it a little bit so that the white comes through as white. All right, let's do the shoot now. Ah, few precautions that I'd like to mention uh, to you that we have taken here to minimize any shake is that uh, we going to shoot in mirror up mode and because it's a DSLR and uh, we're going to shoot it in self timer mode. It's believed that the tripod actually takes about eight to 10 seconds before it actually stabilizes the image. These are, you know, Puritan stocks. Um, I am also using a remote trigger. I'm not touching the camera at all. So basically the idea is to minimize any vibrations. Uh, I'm hoping that there is no vibration coming through uh, because of, you know, it's an office building. And of course, uh, the focus is also locked in in manual mode. So nothing other than the shutter speed will change, uh, you know, along with the aperture. All right. So the first shot, here we go at 1.464 ISO. It's 10 seconds self timer time. There you go. The first shot was taken. Let me take the entire set of uh, shots while you go and get a coffee. Now that we have finished uh, shooting the entire, uh, you know, series of exposures, uh, we're going to take a look at these images critically on a large screen. And then we will put this lens to a real life test. We'll do a small portraiture shot, uh, some candid shots, and also look at how well the bouquet is. It's very important for us. And how good is the focus fall off is. So stay tuned till the end. I'm uh, really enjoying this uh, Tamron 35 1.4. In fact, I have used almost all 35 1.4s available for uh, Nikon. And uh, this one really at really at the top of the game and I don't see any compromise made at any point. Uh, well, this particular lens is actually a 40th anniversary edition of the SP series. 
Well, the SP35, the 40th anniversary is also called named as, I think, F045. A little trivia. Well, I also understand that uh, Tamron would like to call this the ultra performance lens and I don't see any reason why it should not be called as an ultra uh, performance lens because it's it's got a built to last feel to begin with, okay? And when I look at those images, I keep telling this word Kadak. Uh, you know, it's a very Indian way of expressing fantastic quality. Uh, so, all in all, I really, really like this lens and I would definitely recommend this lens to uh, a wedding photographer, street photographer. I might even repeat it in the video sometime later too because I like this very much. So, let me get into the remainder of the shoot and uh, take some more images. Alright, I see you soon. Now let's look at the images that we shot uh, with this fantastic lens, okay? First, the images uh, of the test chart. Uh, vineating first, all right. Let's look at these uh, images and I see vineating happening at 1.4 and gradually decreasing from 2 onwards and 2.8 onwards it disappears. It's optics, right? I mean, the 1.4 or the maximum wide opening is likely to have a little uh, vignetting, which will go away the moment you apply the uh, profile correction. So if you want to keep it, because you know, that is also an effect. I usually add a little bit of vignetting to, you know, the attract the viewer's attention to the center of the image. If you don't want it, enable the, uh, you know, profile correction and it will disappear along with a few other things like distortion, etc. Now let's talk about edge sharpness. Now when I look at the edge sharpness here, at 1.4, the lens is very sharp and it improves at f2 at f28 it's better f4 is nice and 5.6 also is very nice f8 onwards the sharpness suffers a little bit now this again is optics it's it's common for almost all lenses uh, the aperture that will give you the best resolution usually lies somewhere in the middle, close to the middle of the aperture range. Here it is, uh, the 2.8 f4 seems to be, uh, to me, the sharpest aperture. Of course, as you know, uh, if the aperture is wide, then of course you will lose depth of field. So if you must have depth of field, of course you have to use the 8, 11 and 16. The resolution is not bad, but if what you're looking is uh, absolute sharpness on the model or your subject only and you don't care about the depth at all, then I would personally recommend this lens to be shot wide open. And of course, you can go up to 1.4, which to give you that, you know, silky smooth, but yet highly resolved images. And those full open, big wide apertures like the 1.2 and the 1.4, is very popular among the wedding photographer because they'd like to show the bride and you know i mean they'd like to show the ring there's the the eyes i mean they'd like to work with that shallow depth of field and that beautiful bouquet all around um so yes at 1.42 it is a very highly resolved lens let's look at the center sharpness now this is the 1.4 2, 2, 8, 
5.6 at 8 you start seeing a little uh, you know loss in sharpness due to obvious uh, you know limitations of optics in general but great sharpness at the middle throughout the aperture range what else i don't see any color biases the color reproduction is brilliant if you look at the uh, macbeth chart and the white to black you know this graduation you don't see any color biases at all it's brilliantly rendered what else yeah of course distortion um, well it is a wide angle lens okay 35 mm it is likely to have a little distortion at the edges edges only uh, not apparent all the time but if i uh, lay a grid over it it is there i can see it but the moment you apply the lens correction it disappears so it's a brilliant lens from the point of view of sharpness vignetting uh, color rendition distortion and all that um, i think a wedding photographer a candid uh, you know photographer a street photographer all who are using dslr lenses it's available by the way available for canon and nikon as well and uh, they both will really really uh, like this lens and uh, the sp stands for super performance so they have not compromised i mean tamron has not compromised on any of those promises about quality it is a superbly performing uh, lens they also have some special coating uh, to you know prevent uh, reflection and also have another fluorine coating over it to improve uh, the the life of the front element because the front element is the one which is in contact with the elements what else um, it's a it's a very well built lens um, and uh, we will also take a look at uh, the bokeh uh, when it is minimum focused because that's a time you get these lovely bokehs um, we'll do that here now and also take a small uh, video shot we also tested for uh, flare and uh, performance with uh, strong backlight now besides all this tamron has priced this lens very attractively and it's been around for some time and now for a limited period they are offering four year warranty on this lens which makes this lens even more attractive if i have to speak about one disadvantage about this lens is that it's a little heavier than let's say a nikon's original uh, 35 mm lens but look at the plight of the mirrorless uh, you know camera lenses the the body has become smaller i mean that's what at least they claim but the lenses have become you know very very bulky and heavy but well that's the way things are moving so you know i'm not making a critical comment here but you know you must also consider that when i speak about this lens uh, weight um so all in all a super performer um i think the wedding photographer will definitely like it because uh, by using different crop molds in your full frame camera you can convert this into different type of lenses and yet not compromise on the quality of the bokeh because you're only cropping into the image and the bokeh nature or the bokeh quality will remain exactly the same we also have a few more tamron lenses in the studio so we will bring those uh, reviews very soon so stay tuned and uh, if you are interested in learning photography of course pixel village has a website uh, log on to www.pixelvillage.com and uh, we have some of the finest photography mentors in the country teaching photography online for you see you soon stay safe bye for now